All right guys, so in this video, we're gonna be doing wet sanding these tanks that we just painted. They look uh, they look really good in the shop. They also look really good outside in the sun. However, I've got a few places had a little you know little nibs in them, so we're gonna go ahead and wet sand these. I think I'm gonna do 1500 trizac, and then go back over 2000, and then wet sand from there. Now, when you're wet sanding, this is what you're looking at. Um, this area down here had a little more peel in it than the rest of it. But when you're wet sanding, you want to sand it all smooth uh, to get it like this up here, this edge here. And uh, what you're doing there is cutting it flat and cutting the peel out. And you're just refining. Once you do it with 1500, you go over 2000 and you're refining the, the scratches from the 1500 with the 2000. You can buff from 1500 uh, with this being black. I would like to bring it up a little bit. I may even go over the 2000 with uh, Trizac 3000. But that's what we're going to be doing this afternoon getting these tanks uh, wet sanded polished which i won't polish them tonight uh, once i wet sand them i'll let them gas out for about a day and then i'll get back in here tack them off wipe them down and then start the polishing process so what we're going to be doing now is wet sanding these so let's get started what i've got here is a uh, 1500 trizac on a hand pad these work really well uh already got a little bit of soapy water sprayed down on it and we'll just wipe over it. Uh, you're not doing, you know, really hard pressure. Just wiping it down. And what you can do uh, is cross cut. Uh, cross cutting cuts it down a little bit quicker when you do that. I'm going to go back and wipe it off. Sure our paper's clean. Heard something in there making a little scratchy sound there. Sound like it's still in there. May just be the paper. Maybe not. I'm not sure. So you guys can see I still got the Jeep in here haven't came and picked it up yet due to the weather been really rainy and wet here so I can't say that I blame I'm not wanting to drive it home in the rain get it all nasty so he didn't rush me on painting it so I'm not gonna rush him on picking it up Okay, so this is what you're looking at after the 1500. Uh, it's got a few, like I picked up a piece of trash right there, got a little scratch in, I'm gonna fix that. Make sure that's gone before we go any further. But we'll fix that. And you 
you see the peel, the orange peel is gone. So we're uh, good to go from here. There's a little bit right there. So we'll hit that again with 1500. Um, and then we'll go to 2000 and uh, we'll cut you back on at the 2000 grid. All right, so we've had our 2000 soaking in a bucket of soapy water. Got us a little soft hand pad here. I'm gonna wrap this thing up. Spray it down. And hit it with the 2000. Now, like I say, from this 1500 uh, with 3M, uh, let's see which, with the 3M polishes, you can uh, usually buff out 1500. The stuff that I use, I use the Meguiar's 105 and 205. The 105 will bring out the 1500 and press the uh, ultra cutting cream. That's a water-based product and that will also bring out the 1500. Um, like I said, with it being black, I kind of like to re refine the scratches, go with 2000, maybe 3000. We'll just see how it comes out when we get it all done. So here we go with the 2000. And two, when I'm doing the next cut, I try to go, if at all possible, the final sand with this last cut will all try to be in the same direction, general direction. That way, you know, you see all your scratches going in the same, same direction. You know, you got all the other scratches out, the prior scratches of the 1500. And you'll also hear it not cutting as much you won't hear the uh i guess the sizzle of the paper going across the the orange peel you'll hear a little bit but not a lot the finer you get the finer the noise gets other than my table rattling you will hear that You can also smell that clear coat when you open it back up like that. You can smell that clear coat when it's gassing out. You can smell that stuff coming out of there. Let you know you're doing something. Guess y'all notice I'm a little tight uh, with space in here today. Like I said, yesterday it was pouring down rain and a buddy of mine came over and I was done with the Jeep. And I wanted to get the Chevelle back in the shop. So him and myself and my son, we pushed it back in here. Once I got it in, I wiped it down. It's got a lot of, uh, a lot of work to do to that car, so. We'll be working on that here pretty soon. Also, you'll be seeing the video of uh, we're going to start doing a motor swap on the Forerunner, the one we painted earlier. The uh, 3 0 is finally laid down in it, so we're going to do a 3 4 swap on it. And that'll be one of our upcoming videos. And you can tell when that water hits that tank with the 2000, it looks wetter and slicker than it did with the 1500. That just lets us know we're getting in the right direction of where we're trying to get to. You'll also notice the water separating and beating off of it. That's also because it's getting finer. There's nowhere for that water to get trapped in there. Uh, so it's gonna come on off there a little quicker. But we're gonna we're gonna aid the process with this uh, little heat gun here. Dry this thing off a little bit. I'll be honest, guys. If this thing looks pretty smooth, this 2000, I may go over it one more time with the 2000 and buff from there. But it's starting to look pretty good.
hit it a little more with the 2000. That cold water hitting that warm tank from that heat gun. Think steaming up a little bit on us. This tank had three good coats of clear put on it. So I think we can sand and sand and sand to get this thing smooth. So you don't ever let anybody tell you that this stuff is easy. Uh, not that it's not easy, but it's hard work. There is some work involved. You gotta wanna do it, and you gotta wanna do it right. I've got friends that tell me I'm crazy. They're coming out here and rubbing on something and sanding it and sanding it and sanding it and, sanding it and painting it and, and sanding it again. But when you get done, and your project is slick and wet and the customer's happy it's a uh, sense of accomplishment sense of pride in what you just accomplished now I went over this twice with the 1500 and I think we'll be in pretty good shape. This tank was a little slicker than the other one. For some reason, it may have been the way I was holding my head, my hand, or my gun. But something made it slicker. So without going over anything uh, and checking it, I'm just going to go straight to the 2000 and see what we get. Get us a fresh piece of 2000. So this is another reason you soak your paper. If you're going in this direction right here, this corner is hitting that edge. So if this paper is not soft, that corner can gouge that paint, can gouge that clear coat get you a scratch in there that's going to be a little tricky to get out you might have to step down to uh you know a thousand grit to get that 2000 mark out and then work your way back up with 1500 and 2000 again so it's always best to soak your paper
All right, so I am gonna go with, I was gonna go with 3,000. I don't have any 3,000 in the drawer. I do have some Merca, 4,000 grit. And uh, we're gonna go over this 2,000 with that. You see right here, I've already hit a small spot. We're gonna go over the uh, tank with a 4,000 and then it will be ready uh, to buff. You also notice I'm not getting it really wet. When you go with a paper this fine, the wetter it gets, the less it cuts. So you want to keep it kind of damp and let it, you know, let it do its work from there. When it gets wet, a lot of water on it, all this piece of paper does is float across the uh, surface and doesn't really do a lot of cutting. Once again, you'll see that water separating quicker than it did with the 2000. See now, you got a really good even shine. Could hit this area right here a little bit more with the Merca. Maybe that little spot. But it looks like it's doing a pretty good job going over that 2000. All right, guys, there's one tank down and one more to go. This is probably kind of risky. Very risky. But we pulled it off. And that's all that matters. Ooh, see that dent? It doesn't matter because that cover goes right over it right there, which is a good thing. Anyway, let's get started on this. So you don't have a hand pad like this. And Trizac can always resort to 1500 and a soft pad. Also by 3M. Get these at O'Reilly's, uh, maybe Advance and AutoZone also, I'm not sure. Usually get most of my stuff at O'Reilly's. And then you just wet it down and cut away. Same thing, it's just uh, some people like the Trizac better, some people like this better. And with the Trizac, as well as the you know, 3000 and 4000, you don't generally get it as wet when you're wet sanding because it doesn't cut as well. But I don't mind, I don't mind a little water when I'm wet sanding because it keeps the residue 
floating off of the project you're working on. Also got a little soapy water in that bottle. Uh, that just helps the paper keep from getting uh, clogged up as quick. It'll help you glide on across your project. And here I'm cross cutting just to cut that down a little bit quicker. And yeah, this wasn't that bad. Uh, 1500 grit is knocking it out very well. <clears throat> Very well. You know, I was telling you guys about the stuff that I got at the auction in one of the other videos where I started uh, prepping these tanks. And uh, this stand here came in the sale uh, I got that stand over there. <clears throat> this two of these stands, this piece of wood was on it. Uh, see, a vacuum cleaner was under it. Some jumper cables, some random, random bits and pieces of things that wasn't really all that count. But what I really wanted was the, the stands. And I think for two stands like that, two stands like this. Uh, I get 40 bucks for all that plus the plus the stuff that was under them so wasn't a bad buy Get us a fresh piece of 2000.
So how about been over this that many times and miss that spot right there? All right, so this is what you get with the 4000 grit. Now it brought, it brought a shine back, a light sheen to it. And you can see in the reflection of the lights, the orange peel is gone. So all you have now is just a dull finish that we've got to buff out. And next step will be, for me anyway, the next step will be to put them out in the sun, let them gas out a little further, and then bring them back in here and we'll start the buffing process.